Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free English ebook before it's gone. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia. Welcome to the 2000 Core English Words and Phrases video series. Each lesson will help you learn new words, practice, and review what you've learned. Okay, let's get started. First is sweater. 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 A sweater is a piece of clothing that we usually wear when it's a little bit cold outside or even when it's very cold outside. A sweater is usually made of a knit material, so it's very warm. Here's an example. The woman is wearing a black sweater. The woman is wearing a black sweater. The woman is wearing a black sweater. Vest. 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 A vest is a type of clothing that covers just part of the upper half of your body. A vest usually covers this area here, over the top of your shoulders, across the chest, and usually down to about the hips. Here's an example sentence. I feel like I'm dressed formally when I wear a vest with my suit. I feel like I'm dressed formally when I wear a vest with my suit. I feel like I am dressed formally when I wear a vest with my suit. Jeans. 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 Jeans refers to a very, very common type of casual pants. Classically, jeans are blue in color, but you might see them in black or white or maybe many other different colors. Jeans are usually made from a very tough material called denim. Here's an example. Jeans are commonly worn by many people. Jeans are commonly worn by many people. Jeans are commonly worn by many people. Clothes. 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 Clothes refers to all of the different kinds of things that we put on our body to keep us warm. So this can refer to shirts or skirts, pants, socks, scarves, hats, everything that we can wear that is made of kind of like a fabric material can be understood as clothes. Here's an example. The clothes on the floor are dirty. The clothes on the floor are dirty. The clothes on the floor are dirty. Pocket. 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 A pocket is something that you find on usually pants or skirts or maybe in coats and jackets. It's a small part of the fabric that has a hole in it where there's other fabric inside. You can put things inside the pocket, like your phone, some money, some makeup, whatever. Here's an example sentence. The key is in my pants pocket. The key is in my pants pocket. The key is in my pants pocket. Button. 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 Button can be both a noun and a verb. As a noun, it refers to these small items that you might have on some of your clothing that are usually round in shape that you can use to connect pieces of fabric together to close them. As a verb, to button something means to put two things together, as in fabric, to close. Here's an example. The red buttons will look nice on this shirt. The red buttons will look nice on this shirt. The red buttons will look nice on this shirt. Elastic band. Elastic band. Elastic band. An elastic band is something that you might find on things like pants and skirts. So instead of a zipper to close the pant or to close the skirt, sometimes companies choose to put elastic bands around the waist. So this helps it to become tight around the waist of the person wearing the thing. Here's an example. Adding an elastic band to the pants will help them sell to overweight people. Adding an elastic band to the pants will help them sell to overweight people. 
adding an elastic band to the pants will help them sell to overweight people. Sleeve. 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 A sleeve refers to a part of a shirt or a sweater, and it refers to any part that covers this section of the arm, from the shoulder down to the wrist. So you might find a short sleeve shirt, which usually ends around here, or a long sleeve shirt, which goes all the way down here, or even a shirt with no sleeves, where there's nothing covering this part of the arm. Here's an example. The sleeve on the shirt you made is too short. The sleeve on the shirt you made is too short. The sleeve on the shirt you made is too short. Collar. 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 The collar is the part of the shirt that is around the neck. So in formal shirts, for example, like business shirts, you might see collars that have a bit of height to them, and then they fold out over the front of the shirt. So there can be many different types of collars, like sweaters might have something that have kind of like a lot of fabric right here that has this very, very warm and cozy feel about it. But all the fabric around the neck is called the collar. Here's an example. Shirts with collars are considered more formal. Shirts with collars are considered more formal. Shirts with collars are considered more formal. T-shirt. 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 A t-shirt is a very popular type of shirt. It's a very casual, easy to wear piece of clothing. A t-shirt is very easy to understand. It's shaped like a T. So a t-shirt has a very, very simple shape at the top. It's a short sleeved shirt that ends about here. And then it goes down to about the waist of the person wearing it. So it makes a big T shape. Here's an example sentence. The blue t-shirt is made from cotton. The blue t-shirt is made from cotton. The blue t-shirt is made from cotton. Let's review. I'm going to describe a word or phrase in English. See if you can remember it. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say the word that refers to a usually very warm piece of clothing that covers the top of our body and that is usually made of a knit material? Sweater, sweater. And how to say the type of clothing that covers the front part of your body and connects in the front, as well as the back part of your body, but doesn't have sleeves. Vest, vest. What about the word that refers to the very, very casual and very popular pant that is usually made from denim? Jeans. Jeans. Do you remember how to say the word that refers to everything that we can wear, all of the different things we can put on our body, from shirts to socks to pants to skirts? Clothes. Clothes. Let's try the word that refers to a small hole in something you're wearing, like uh, pants or perhaps even in coats, that you can use to put something inside. Pocket. Pocket. What about the word that refers to the small, usually circle-shaped thing that you can use to connect two pieces of fabric? Button. Button. Now, let's see if you remember how to say the stretchy material that you can use at the top of skirts or pants to make it fit around the waist of the wearer. Elastic band. Elastic band. Another one. What about the word that refers to the part of a sweater or a jacket that covers the arm? It might be short or it might be long. Sleeve. 
sleeve, sleeve. Do you remember how to say the part of the shirt that is around the neck? It could be very formal or it could be very, very loose fitting and very cozy. Collar, collar. And finally, do you remember how to say the very, very popular and very casual and very easy to wear type of shirt? T-shirt, T-shirt. Well done, see you next time, bye. Decrease. 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 Decrease can be used as a noun and as a verb. This word means to go down. So to start from a point that is high and move to something that is lower than the beginning point. Here's an example sentence. If you want to decrease your debt, stop borrowing money. If you want to decrease your debt, stop borrowing money. If you want to decrease your debt, stop borrowing money. Gasoline. 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 Gasoline is the liquid material that we put inside our cars, trucks, buses, and even airplanes to power them, to create energy so that they can go places. We commonly shorten gasoline to gas. Here's an example sentence. All of our delivery vehicles run on gasoline. All of our delivery vehicles run on gasoline. All of our delivery vehicles run on gasoline. Scarf. 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 A scarf is a type of clothing. It's a piece of clothing. A scarf is usually a long piece of fabric that we wear around our neck or maybe that we put around our shoulders. We usually wear scarves in the winter when it's cold. Here's an example. Tomorrow will be cold and windy, so wear a scarf. Tomorrow will be cold and windy, so wear a scarf. Tomorrow will be cold and windy, so wear a scarf. Sunglasses. 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 Sunglasses are like dark glasses that we use to protect our eyes from sunlight. So sunglasses are of course very popular and there are many styles. Here's an example. These sunglasses are new. These sunglasses are new. These sunglasses are new. Hanger, hanger, hanger. A hanger is something that we use to put our clothing on and then put it in the closet. So it's usually shaped in a kind of triangle shape with a hook at the top. Here's an example sentence. Give me a coat hanger. Give me a coat hanger. Give me a coat hanger. Cloth, cloth, cloth. Cloth is a very general word that we use to refer to usually a small piece of fabric. We typically use the word cloth when we're talking about something that we use like for cleaning purposes or other household tasks. Here's an example. Use a soft dry cloth when dusting wooden furniture. Use a soft dry cloth when dusting wooden furniture. Use a soft, dry cloth when dusting wooden furniture. Coat. 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 A coat is an important piece of clothing. A coat is something warm that we wear over the top of our body, and it can be short, about to waist length, or maybe to hip length, or maybe it goes all the way to your ankles or to your knees. So a coat is something that we wear to keep warm. Here's an example sentence. I wore my new coat to school yesterday. I wore my new coat to school yesterday. I wore my new coat to school yesterday. 
overcoat. 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 An overcoat sounds like maybe what you think it is. An overcoat is a coat that you can wear over the top of other things. So if you have a light coat or a light jacket or sweater perhaps on, you can put an overcoat on top for an extra layer of warm clothing. Here's an example sentence. A well-dressed businessman wears an overcoat. A well-dressed businessman wears an overcoat. A well-dressed businessman wears an overcoat. Raincoat. 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 A raincoat is a special type of coat that we wear in the rain. These coats are often made of materials that are waterproof or water resistant, so they don't get wet when we wear them in the rain. Here's an example. The children are wearing raincoats. The children are wearing raincoats. The children are wearing raincoats. Sweatsuit. 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 A sweatsuit might also be called a track suit, but a sweatsuit refers to something that matches on the top and on the bottom. So there's a sweat shirt on the top and a pair of sweat pants on the bottom. This refers to a very, very casual look. Usually the inside is kind of fluffy and warm and the outside is very, very neutral in color or it just looks quite casual. Here's an example sentence. The woman is wearing a sweatsuit. The woman is wearing a sweatsuit. The woman is wearing a sweatsuit. Coal. 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 Coal is a material that we can burn. When we go camping, for example, we might use coal in the fire or we might use coal in a barbecue. We can also use coal to generate energy. Here's an example sentence. The country still has a large coal industry. The country still has a large coal industry. The country still has a large coal industry. Gas. 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 Gas is another material that we can use for energy. You might also know gas as the short version of the word for gasoline, which we use for cars and trucks and so on. But this type of gas refers to something we cannot see, the gas we do not use for our cars and trucks. Rather, we use gas for other purposes, other energy generating purposes, like in our homes. So here's an example sentence. We use natural gas to heat the factory. We use natural gas to heat the factory. We use natural gas to heat the factory. Textile. 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 A textile is a kind of physical material that we can use to produce something else, usually like clothing or bags or accessories. So textiles usually refer to fabrics that we use to create these kinds of things. Here's an example sentence. The textile factory creates fabrics from cotton, linen, and silk. The textile factory creates fabrics from cotton, linen, and silk. The textile factory creates fabrics from cotton, linen, and silk. Electricity. 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 Electricity is what we use in our homes, schools, cars, and other very, very common places for power. Electricity is used to turn on the light or to use the computer and many, many other things. We can use it in battery form as well. So electricity is what we use to get power in our lives. Here's an example sentence. Let's save electricity by turning off the power. Let's save electricity by turning off the power. Let's save electricity by turning off the power. Input. Input. 
input. Input can be a noun and a verb. In this situation, we're going to focus on the noun form. An input refers to a part of something where you can put something else into it. So you might see this word used when you're talking about computers or machines or maybe even something in your kitchen. So any part that has something that you can attach something else to could be called an input. Here's an example sentence. The input to the computer controls the output of the assembly line. The input to the computer controls the output of the assembly line. The input to the computer controls the output of the assembly line. Fishing. 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 Fishing is a very common hobby. When you go to a lake or perhaps to the ocean, and you usually take a long rod called a fishing pole or a fishing rod, and you go try to catch fish, that activity is called fishing. Here's an example. My grandfather takes me fishing every Saturday. My grandfather takes me fishing every Saturday. My grandfather takes me fishing every Saturday. Tourism. 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 So, tourism is an industry. Tourism refers to businesses that offer services to visitors to the country to try to attract people. Usually, tourism focuses on sharing local foods, local culture, and of course, interesting places in the local country. Here's an example sentence. Many resort destinations rely on tourism for most of their income. Many resort destinations rely on tourism for most of their income. Many resort destinations rely on tourism for most of their income. Export. 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 So, to export something means to take something from one country and move it to another country. However, with exports, this is done officially. So, when one country exports something to another country, it is for sale. Here's an example sentence. The United States exports food products around the world. The United States exports food products around the world. The United States exports food products around the world. Import. 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 To import is the opposite of to export. So to import something means to receive something from another country. It means to receive a product or a food item or something like that from another country for sale or for use in one other country, like a home country. Here's an example sentence. We import all of our cotton from Egypt. We import all of our cotton from Egypt. We import all of our cotton from Egypt. Automobile. 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 Automobile refers to any vehicle that can move automatically. So if we break down the word automobile, we see auto referring to automatic and mobile referring to something that can move. So we use this word to talk generally about things like cars, buses, trucks, and so on. Things that can move automatically. Here's an example. The automobile is turning right. The automobile is turning right. The automobile is turning right. Neat. Neat. Meat. To meet is a verb. It means to connect with another person, usually face to face. We can also use meet these days in digital situations, like when we're doing video calls. Here's an example. I'm going to meet my friend at 7 p.m. I'm going to meet my friend at 7 p.m. I'm going to meet my friend at 7 p.m. Okay, next is revise. 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 
To revise is a verb. This word means to edit. So when we revise something, we make changes to something. We use this one a lot when we're writing something, like an essay or an article, and we need to make some changes. Revise tends to sound a little more formal than edit. Here's an example. At times, it is necessary to revise a schedule as the meeting goes on. At times, it is necessary to revise a schedule as the meeting goes on. At times, it is necessary to revise a schedule as the meeting goes on. Okay, next is director. 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 A director is a position in a company. Usually, the director of the company is in charge of making key decisions for the company. The word direct is in this word, which suggests, correctly, that the director of a company tells other people what to do. They also kind of pinpoint the direction the company is going in. So these are some good hints that can help you to remember the job of a director. Here's an example. He's the director of my company. He's the director of my company. He's the director of my company. Okay, next is factory. 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 A factory is a big location where something is created, where things are made. Physical products are created in a factory. Here's an example The factory manager is giving instructions. The factory manager is giving instructions. The factory manager is giving instructions. Okay, the next word is output. 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 So, output can be used as a noun or a verb. Usually, it's used as a noun, however. So, output refers to all of the things that are created by something else. We can also use this when we talk about a person, as in all of the things that a person accomplishes or creates. So, we usually use this when we talk about physical things. So, physical objects or physical products that something has created. Here's an example. Output of the factory has fallen since the new managers took over. Output of the factory has fallen since the new managers took over. Output of the factory has fallen since the new managers took over. Okay, next is workforce. 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 Workforce is a noun. It refers to all of the people in a region, in a city, or in a country who are working. These are people who have jobs. We usually talk about the workforce when we talk about all of the people who are working in a country. And we often do this when we want to talk about their age, their maybe location, the kinds of data that we need to make decisions for the economy or maybe the political direction of our country. Here's an example. The workforce is half men and half women. The workforce is half men and half women. The workforce is half men and half women. Okay, the next word is material. 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 Material means the thing that something is made of. So we can have hard material, soft materials, cheap materials, expensive materials. We use materials to create other things. Here's an example. Silk is a nice material for a blouse. Silk is a nice material for a blouse. Silk is a nice material for a blouse. Okay, the next word is part. 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 A part is a piece of something or a portion of something. Part can mean one paragraph in an essay or it can mean one small piece inside a machine. So a part of something is just one small bit of something or one small aspect of something that is bigger. Here's an example. Without the new part, we can't make any more widgets. 
Without the new part, we can't make any more widgets. Without the new part, we can't make any more widgets. Okay, next is machine. 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 A machine is a noun. A machine is usually, these days, something that has moving parts and that uses electricity to run. In the old days, in old times, machines were powered by humans and by animals. But these days, most machines use electricity. Here's an example. The copy machine was very expensive. The copy machine was very expensive. The copy machine was very expensive. Okay, the next word is cement. 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 Cement is a material. We see cement probably every day. Cement is used to create sidewalks, the locations next to the road where people can walk. We also use cement to create buildings, especially building walls. It's usually gray in color, though sometimes people paint other colors on it. It's very, very hard, and it takes a long time to dry. So here's an example. The equipment needs to be mounted to a solid cement floor. The equipment needs to be mounted to a solid cement floor. The equipment needs to be mounted to a solid cement floor. Announce. 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 To announce is a verb. To announce means to share something in a formal way so that many, many people hear the information or read the information. We can use this for spoken or written information. Here's an example. Make sure you announce the meeting to everyone who needs to be there. Make sure you announce the meeting to everyone who needs to be there. Make sure you announce the meeting to everyone who needs to be there. Okay, next is hold a meeting. Hold a meeting. Hold a meeting. The expression hold a meeting can be understood as have a meeting. It's just hold a meeting tends to sound a little bit more formal or a little bit more business-like. So when you want to have a meeting, if you need to be polite about it, you can say you want to hold a meeting. Here's an example. There's no need to hold a meeting every day. There's no need to hold a meeting every day. There is no need to hold a meeting every day. Okay, next is approve. 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 To approve is a verb. To approve something means to say that something is okay. So we use the verb to approve usually at work and in school situations. Someone makes an application for something or submits something and we look at the information and say yes or no. If we say yes, we approve that thing. We say this is okay. Here's an example sentence. We all agreed to approve what the chairman was asking for. We all agreed to approve what the chairman was asking for. We all agreed to approve what the chairman was asking for. Okay, next is criticize. 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 To criticize is a verb. To criticize means to say something that could be improved about something else. So we tend to use criticize in situations where the person feels it's a little bit negative. This can often come across as somebody giving advice when it is not asked for. Sometimes, however, when we criticize something, it is to help the other person improve. These days, it tends to sound a little bit negative, though. But to criticize means to tell someone something they could do to improve or to say what is not good about something else. Here's an example. There's a polite way to criticize someone else's plans. There's a polite way to criticize someone else's plans. There is a polite way to criticize someone else's plans.
Okay, next is put forward. Put forward. Put forward. The expression to put forward is a more formal way to say introduce, and we usually use put forward for ideas, opinions, plans, proposals. So when we put something forward, it's usually something that we put in front of, like a boss or someone who is higher above us at work. It's like you're putting something in front of another person to say, what do you think about this? So it's like introducing the idea, but putting it in front of you or putting it forward in front of the people who need to make a decision about it. Here's an example sentence. The chairman chose to put forward a whole new idea. The chairman chose to put forward a whole new idea. The chairman chose to put forward a whole new idea. Okay, the next word is support. 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 So, support can be a noun or a verb. As a verb, it means to express that you like something or to express that you want something or someone else to succeed. So you can support your favorite artist or your favorite creator or someone in your community that you really like. You express support by giving them money or by cheering them on. We use this in sports situations, in politics, in entertainment, and so on. So you can support your favorite someone in many industries. Here's an example. I support the current political party. I support the current political party. I support the current political party. Okay, next is believe. 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 To believe is a verb that means to think that something is true or to think that something is real. We use this when we listen to stories and we decide is it true or false. And we also use this word when we talk about our religious ideas. Here's an example sentence. I can't believe that story. I can't believe that story. I can't believe that story. Okay, next is research. 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 Research can be used as a noun and as a verb. As a verb, it means to look in detail at a topic. As a noun, it means all of the information about that topic that other people have looked for. Here's an example sentence. Study the research for an answer to the question. Study the research for an answer to the question. Study the research for an answer to the question. Okay, next is request. 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 Request can be used as a noun and as a verb. To request something means to ask something or ask for something from someone else. A noun form of request or the noun form of request means an inquiry from another person, something that someone else has asked you for or has asked you to do. Here's an example. The chairman made the request that we all attend the meeting. The chairman made the request that we all attend the meeting. The chairman made the request that we all attend the meeting. Okay, next is negotiate. 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 To negotiate is a verb. To negotiate means to try to change the situation, to try to get a good price on something, to try to get a good deal on something, to try to change the situation in some way by discussing the situation with the other person. Here's an example sentence. I negotiated the price. I negotiated the price. I negotiated the price. Way of thinking. Way of thinking. Way of thinking. 
This expression, way of thinking, refers to how someone thinks. So this refers to the way that they make their decisions or the method they use to make decisions. Here's an example sentence: This new plan goes against my way of thinking. This new plan goes against my way of thinking. This new plan goes against my way of thinking. Okay. Next is objection. 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 This word objection you might have heard on TV shows, especially legal and police related TV shows. An objection, this is a noun, means a feeling of no or a way to say a denial of something else. Here's an example sentence. I have no objection to what you want to do. I have no objection to what you want to do. I have no objection to what you want to do. Okay, next is energetic. 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 Energetic is an adjective. It means something that is full of energy or something that has lots and lots of energy. We usually use energetic to talk about people or maybe even animals, but it usually has a very positive feel. Here's an example sentence: She was the most energetic speaker we ever had. She was the most energetic speaker we ever had. She was the most energetic speaker we ever had. Okay, next is discussion. 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 Discussion is a noun. A discussion is a situation in which many people are talking about a topic. You might have a discussion in school. There might be a discussion at work, like in a meeting, and you might also see discussions at bars and restaurants. It's any time people are talking about a topic together. Here's an example sentence: There was a very lively discussion during the meeting. There was a very lively discussion during the meeting. There was a very lively discussion during the meeting. Okay, next is disagree. 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 Disagree is a verb. It is the opposite of agree. So to disagree means to have the opposite or to have a different opinion from someone else. So if one person thinks A, you might think, no, I believe B is correct. We can express this with disagree. Here's an example: We can agree to disagree without fighting with each other. We can agree to disagree without fighting with each other. We can agree to disagree without fighting with each other. Okay, next is maintain. 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 Maintain is a verb. Another way to understand maintain is keep, but it doesn't mean keep as in hold something. To maintain something means to keep it in a condition. So, for example, we use maintain when we talk about like cars or buses or airplanes. We keep the condition in good condition with the things that we need to use for transportation. We do like、uh, technical repairs. We do cleaning tasks. And so on to keep that thing in good condition. So to maintain something means to keep something in a good condition. Here's an example sentence: There are rules because it is important to maintain order in a meeting. There are rules because it is important to maintain order in a meeting. There are rules because it is important to maintain order in a meeting. Okay. Next is change. 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 To change means to transform something else. So this can be a very small transformation, and it also can be a very, very big one. So to change something means to cause it to become different. Here's an example sentence: Entrepreneurs change the world with their ideas. Entrepreneurs change the world with their ideas. 
entrepreneurs change the world with their ideas. Okay, next is decide. 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 To decide means to make a decision, to choose something. So to decide is usually used when we have a few options and we need to think very carefully about them. It's a little bit different from choose in this way. We tend to use decide in more formal situations or in business situations. Here's an example sentence. A vote is the best way to decide important matters. A vote is the best way to decide important matters. A vote is the best way to decide important matters. Okay, next is oppose. 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 To oppose is a verb. To oppose something else means to be against that thing. So we usually oppose things that we disagree with. We don't think those things are correct. So to express that we don't want that thing or we think it is not a good idea, we use the word oppose. So here's an example. It is okay to oppose actions you disagree with. It is okay to oppose actions you disagree with. It is okay to oppose actions you disagree with. Okay, next is agree. 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 To agree is a verb. To agree means to have the same opinion as someone else. So if someone says something to you and you have the same opinion, you think, yeah, I think so too. You can express that situation with the verb agree. Here's an example sentence. You can't agree with everyone about everything. You can't agree with everyone about everything. You can't agree with everyone about everything. Media. 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 Media refers to a lot of different things like news, art, entertainment, basically anything you can read, listen to, watch, something like that. You can take in information in some way. This is referred to or this is called media. Here's an example sentence. The media industry is rapidly changing because of the internet. The media industry is rapidly changing because of the internet. The media industry is rapidly changing because of the internet. Okay, next word is translate. 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 To translate is a verb. To translate something means to change written words from one language to another. So we use translate when we're talking about a book, an article, something that is written. Here's an example sentence. I can translate the document by next Friday. I can translate the document by next Friday. I can translate the document by next Friday. Okay, next is printing. 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 Okay, so printing refers to the process of creating something physical from something digital. Usually, we use the verb to print when we talk about something we need to use at school or at work, and we usually print something on paper. Here's an example sentence The woman is printing a document. The woman is printing a document. The woman is printing a document. Okay, next is boardroom. 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 A boardroom is a meeting room. The difference between a boardroom and a meeting room is that usually boardrooms are places where the very, very high level people in companies have their meetings. So these people are often referred to as the board of the company. They're kind of the people in charge of the company. As a result, the place where they have their meetings is called the boardroom. Here's an example sentence. Our important meetings are all held in the boardroom. 
Our important meetings are all held in the boardroom. Our important meetings are all held in the boardroom. Okay, next is chairman. 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 A chairman is someone who is in charge of something else, usually a group or a department or a committee of some kind. Chairman refers to a male who is in charge. You might see chairperson also used to talk about someone regardless of gender. Here's an example sentence. The chairman is usually the person in charge. The chairman is usually the person in charge. The chairman is usually the person in charge. Okay, the next word is interpreter. 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 An interpreter is someone who changes spoken language from one language to another. So you see interpreters in business situations, like in conferences and in meetings, and you might also see them in news-related situations. Here's an example sentence. I want to be an interpreter of Japanese and Thai. I want to be an interpreter of Japanese and Thai. I want to be an interpreter of Japanese and Thai. Okay, the next word is translator. 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 A translator is someone who changes written words from one language to another. So this is different from an interpreter. An interpreter changes spoken words from one language to another. A translator changes written words from one language to another. So these people are very, very important for books and articles and other written things. Here's an example sentence. I was a French translator before. I was a French translator before. I was a French translator before. Okay, next is humorous. 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 Humorous means funny. This is an adjective. The difference between humorous and funny is that humorous is more formal than funny. In everyday conversation, we usually say something is funny, but if you need to say something is funny in a more formal or polite situation, you can say that thing is humorous. Here's an example. A humorous story is a great way to make a point. A humorous story is a great way to make a point. A humorous story is a great way to make a point. Okay, next is joke. 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 Okay, a joke can be a noun and to joke is used as a verb. So when we tell a joke as a noun, we are telling a funny story. When we use it as a verb, to joke, it means the process of telling a funny story or making some kind of situation, the aim of which is for people to laugh. Here's an example sentence. The clown jokes a lot. The clown jokes a lot. The clown jokes a lot. Okay, next is impression. 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 So, impression is a noun. An impression is an idea of something else. We usually use impression when we talk about like our idea of someone's personality or someone's character or maybe even an idea someone had. So, we can use it sometimes to ask about another person's opinion of someone else. Another common situation in which we use impression is in the expression first impression, which means our first opinion of someone when we meet them. Here's an example sentence. What was your impression of the boss's idea? What was your impression of the boss's idea? What was your impression of the boss's idea? Transmit. 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 To transmit is a verb. It sounds a little bit on the formal side, but it means to communicate information, to send information. For example, the know-how of artisans must be transmitted. 
the know-how of artisans must be transmitted. The know-how of artisans must be transmitted. Next is newspaper publisher. Newspaper publisher. Newspaper publisher. A newspaper publisher is a company or an organization that is responsible for printing and creating newspapers. Here's an example. The newspaper publisher must be responsible for the content. The newspaper publisher must be responsible for the content. The newspaper publisher must be responsible for the content. Okay, next is report. 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 Report can be a noun and a verb. In this case, let's look at the noun form. A report of something is like sharing the information about something. It's the key details of something that happened. Here's an example. I saw the TV report about last night's earthquake. I saw the TV report about last night's earthquake. I saw the TV report about last night's earthquake. Okay, next is submit. 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 To submit is a verb. Usually, to submit means to turn something in. For example, to submit your homework or to submit an application form. It means to give something to someone else to apply for something or to complete something. Here's an example. It is important to submit your stories by the deadline. It is important to submit your stories by the deadline. It is important to submit your stories by the deadline. Okay, next is news. 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 So, news refers to current recent events. You might have local news, and you probably also know about global news or world news. This news refers to things that are happening around us. Here's an example. Turn on the television so we can watch the news. Turn on the television so we can watch the news. Turn on the television so we can watch the news. Next is TV station. TV station. TV station. A TV station is a place where TV shows are created. So this might be a news station, it might be an entertainment station, it might be an education kind of organization. There are many different types of organizations that produce TV shows. Here's an example. A TV station must balance entertainment and news to keep its audience watching. A TV station must balance entertainment and news to keep its audience watching. A TV station must balance entertainment and news to keep its audience watching. Okay, next is edit. 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 To edit means to make a change to an existing work of art, usually for written works like essays and books and poems and video-related things and photo-related things. It means to make small changes usually, sometimes big changes to something. For example, an editor will take a lot of information and edit it into a watchable story. An editor will take a lot of information and edit it into a watchable story. An editor will take a lot of information and edit it into a watchable story. Okay, next is cartoon. 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 A cartoon is something that is made from animated or illustrated characters. Cartoons can be movies, and you might also see cartoons in newspapers. Here's an example. Donald Duck is my favorite cartoon character. Donald Duck is my favorite cartoon character. Donald Duck is my favorite cartoon character. 
Okay, next is program. 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 Program is a noun and a verb. As a noun, it often refers to a specific TV show, as in something that you watch every week or every day. Here's an example sentence. I watch my favorite program every Friday night on TV. I watch my favorite program every Friday night on TV. I watch my favorite program every Friday night on TV. Okay, next is channel. 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 A channel is usually a number that is assigned to one specific broadcast station or TV station. You can choose the channel to choose the type of content you want to watch. Here's an example. If you don't like one TV show, you can just change the channel. If you don't like one TV show, you can just change the channel. If you don't like one TV show, you can just change the channel. Local train. Local train. Local train. A local train is a train that stops at all stations on the train line. Here's an example sentence. The local train stops at every small station along its route. The local train stops at every small station along its route. The local train stops at every small station along its route. Timetable. 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 A timetable is a list of times of usually departures and arrivals or other types of schedules. We use timetables a lot for buses, trains, for classes, lectures, and other things that require a strict schedule. Here's an example. Departure and arrival times are all on the timetable. Departure and arrival times are all on the timetable. Departure and arrival times are all on the timetable. Ticket inspection. Ticket inspection. Ticket inspection. A ticket inspection is an expression that means a ticket check. So when you get on a bus or a train, for example, you may be asked to show your ticket. The staff want to confirm you have a ticket or that you have the correct ticket, for example. Here's an example sentence. Keep your ticket handy for a ticket inspection at each stop. Keep your ticket handy for a ticket inspection at each stop. Keep your ticket handy for a ticket inspection at each stop. Ticket gate. Ticket gate. Ticket gate. A ticket gate is a short gate you pass through with your ticket. Depending on the gate, you may need to show your ticket to a staff member or put your ticket into the gate to have it checked by the gate. Here's an example sentence. Show your ticket at the ticket gate on the way to the train. Show your ticket at the ticket gate on the way to the train. Show your ticket at the ticket gate on the way to the train. Platform. 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 A platform is the place next to the train tracks. It's where you get on the train and the place where you go to after you get off the train. This is the area where you can wait for your train to arrive. Here's an example sentence. The man is waiting on the platform. The man is waiting on the platform. The man is waiting on the platform. Ticket machine. Ticket machine. Ticket machine. A ticket machine is a machine where you can buy a ticket. It may look like a vending machine. It may be some kind of machine in a wall. It depends on the location, but it's a place where you can buy a ticket for something. Here's an example. The ticket machine is broken. The ticket machine is broken. The ticket machine is broken. Ticket booth. 
ticket booth. Ticket booth. A ticket booth is a small area of usually a lobby or maybe an information desk where you can buy a ticket from a person. So it's different from a ticket machine because usually there is a staff person there to help you. You find ticket booths in train stations and in movie theaters, for example. Here's an example sentence. The ticket booth is empty. The ticket booth is empty. The ticket booth is empty. Print. 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 So, print is a verb. Maybe you have a printer in your home. When you print something, you make it go from a digital form on your computer to a physical form on a piece of paper. Here's an example sentence. We needed to print 500 copies of the memo. We needed to print 500 copies of the memo. We needed to print 500 copies of the memo. Publish. 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 To publish something means to make something public. We use this with writing and with digital content. So, for example, blog content or video content or social media content. Here's an example. Should we publish the new book on paper or on the internet? Should we publish the new book on paper or on the internet? Should we publish the new book on paper or on the internet? Pamphlet. 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 A pamphlet is usually a piece of folded paper that has some basic information about an event, a company, or an organization. They are usually very easy to take and they are often free at event spaces. Here's an example. A pamphlet is a good, cheap way to pass out valuable information. A pamphlet is a good, cheap way to pass out valuable information. A pamphlet is a good, cheap way to pass out valuable information. Beijing. 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 Beijing is a very, very big city in China, one of the biggest cities in the world. Here's an example sentence. Beijing, capital of the People's Republic of China, is also called Peking. Beijing, capital of the People's Republic of China, is also called Peking. Beijing, capital of the People's Republic of China, is also called Peking. London. 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 London is the biggest city in the country of England, another very, very famous city and well-known city around the world. Here's an example sentence. London is the capital of England and the United Kingdom. London is the capital of England and the United Kingdom. London is the capital of England and the United Kingdom. Paris. 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 Paris is France's biggest city. It's well known for things like the Eiffel Tower. Here's an example. The capital and largest city in France is Paris. The capital and largest city in France is Paris. The capital and largest city in France is Paris. Berlin. 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 Berlin is the capital city of Germany, another huge city. Here's an example. Berlin is the largest city and capital of Germany. Berlin is the largest city and capital of Germany. Berlin is the largest city and capital of Germany. New York. New York. New York. New York is a very famous city on the east coast of the United States of America. Here's an example. More than 10 million people live in the New York area. More than 10 million people live in the New York area. 
More than 10 million people live in the New York area. Rome. 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 Rome is a very big city in Italy. It has so much interesting culture and history. Here's an example. The largest city and capital of Italy is Rome. The largest city and capital of Italy is Rome. The largest city and capital of Italy is Rome. Moscow. 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 Moscow is the biggest city in Russia, the capital city of the country. Here's an example. The largest city in Russia is Moscow, its capital. The largest city in Russia is Moscow, its capital. The largest city in Russia is Moscow, its capital. Ticket. 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 A ticket is a noun, and it refers to usually a piece of paper or a digital piece of paper that you can use to get on a train, to go to a movie, to attend an event, and so on. Here's an example. Get your ticket at the station before getting on the train. Get your ticket at the station before getting on the train. Get your ticket at the station before getting on the train. Round trip. Round trip. Round trip. So round trip is an expression we use to refer to a travel situation where you want to purchase a ticket or a flight that covers the way to the destination and the return. So we can think of this as a circle. We start at one point, go somewhere, and return to the origin point. This is a round trip. Here's an example. The round trip fare will get me there and back again. The round trip fare will get me there and back again. The round trip fare will get me there and back again. Express train. Express train. Express train. An express train is a fast train because it does not stop at all of the stations on the train line. It stops usually at major stations only, so it goes a little faster than regular trains. Here's an example. The express train will take you between major cities nonstop. The express train will take you between major cities nonstop. The express train will take you between major cities nonstop. Lobby. 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 A lobby is the basic place in a hotel, usually, where people can wait or people can make arrangements to meet someone else. It's kind of a space for everyone to use. Here's an example Hotel lobby. Hotel lobby. Hotel lobby. Wake up service. Wake up service. Wake up service. Wake up service is a service you can request from hotel staff. You can ask the front desk staff at the hotel to call your room at a certain time to wake you up. Here's an example. I used the wake up service to call me at 6 o'clock a.m. I used the wake up service to call me at 6 o'clock a.m. I used the wake-up service to call me at 6 o'clock a.m. Sweet. 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 A suite is a type of hotel room. In a suite-style hotel room, there is a kitchen and maybe a sitting area included inside the room. Here's an example. Hotel suite. Hotel suite. Hotel suite. Cycling. 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 Cycling is a popular sport. Cycling uses a bicycle. Usually, people who cycle like to go for long distances and even participate in competitions. Here's an example. Cycling race. Cycling race. Cycling 
race. Auto racing. Auto racing. Auto racing. Auto racing is short for automobile racing. So this refers to a sport where cars are raced on a racing track. Here's an example: racing car on an auto racing track. Racing car on an auto racing track. Racing car on an auto racing track. Scotch tape. Scotch tape. Scotch tape. Scotch tape is actually a brand of tape. This is a very commonly used kind of very clear, thin tape we often use around the house, in the office, at school, and so on. Here's an example: roll of scotch tape. Roll of scotch tape. Roll of scotch tape. Be born. Be born. Be born. So we use "born" to talk about the date of our birth or the location of our birth. Make sure when you use this verb that you change the be verb to match your subject. For example, "I was born," "He was born," "She was born," or "You were born," and so on. For example, "I was born in 1980." I was born in 1980. I was born in 1980. Get a job. Get a job. Get a job. To get a job means to go out and search for a way to earn money. This can be a part-time job, a full-time job, a freelance job, and so on. Here's an example. My brother finally got a job. My brother finally got a job. My brother finally got a job. Die. 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 The verb to die means to no longer be alive. We can use the verb to talk about people no longer being alive, animals, plants, basically any living thing. Here's an example. Die of an illness. Die of an illness. Die of an illness. Tokyo. 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 Tokyo is a very, very big city in Japan. It's one of the biggest cities, if not the biggest city in terms of population in the world. Here's an example. Tokyo is really convenient. Tokyo is really convenient. Tokyo is really convenient. Runny nose. Runny nose. Runny nose. A runny nose is a very common problem when you have a cold. It feels like water is going to come out of your nose all the time. Here's an example. Have a runny nose. Have a runny nose. Have a runny nose. Dizzy. 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 Dizzy is an adjective. It describes how we feel when it feels like the world is tilting and moving around us. We feel like we're spinning, and it's hard to feel a sense of balance in our body. Here's an example. I feel dizzy. I feel dizzy. I feel dizzy. Stuffy nose. Stuffy nose. Stuffy nose. A stuffy nose is the opposite of a runny nose. When you have a runny nose, it feels like water is going to come out of your nose. When you have a stuffy nose, it feels like your nose is stopped completely. You can't breathe through it, and nothing goes in or out. Here's an example: medicine for a stuffy nose. Medicine for a stuffy nose. Me. Sin for a stuffy nose. Volleyball. 
Volleyball. Volleyball. Volleyball is a very popular team sport. It's played in two groups. There's one group on one side of the net and another group on another side of the net. Each team has to volley the ball using this motion or this motion or this motion across the net and to the other team members. Here's an example. Play volleyball. Play volleyball. Play volleyball. Golf. 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 Golf is a very popular sport played in very, very big, beautiful landscape settings. You play golf by hitting a golf club at a small white ball and trying to move the ball into a hole very far away. Here's an example. Play golf. Play golf. Play golf. Boxing. 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 Boxing is a very intense sport where two opponents fight each other. They wear big, big boxing gloves and try to win a fight in boxing. Here's an example. Boxing ring. Boxing ring. Boxing ring. Travel. 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 The word travel means to go somewhere. We can travel for work, we can travel for fun, we can travel for emergency purposes also. To travel means to go somewhere else. Here's an example. Travel with luggage. Travel with luggage. Travel with luggage. Graduate. 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 Okay, the word graduate means to finish a course of study. So we usually use this word when we talk about finishing high school or finishing college or university classes. Here's an example. I'm glad that I somehow managed to graduate. I'm glad that I somehow managed to graduate. I'm glad that I somehow managed to graduate. Move. 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 To move can have a couple of different meanings. We can use it to talk about our body motions. We also use this verb to talk about changing your residence, changing the place where you live. We use the verb move to talk about going to a new place to live. Here's an example. We've moved into an apartment. We've moved into an apartment. We've moved into an apartment. New Delhi. New Delhi. New Delhi. New Delhi is a very big city in the country of India. New Delhi, India. New Delhi, India. New Delhi, India. Fatigue. 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 Fatigue is a feeling of tiredness in your body. It's not just tired for a moment, like after exercising, but fatigue is a feeling of tiredness for an entire day or a few days. Here's an example. Muscle fatigue. Muscle fatigue. Muscle fatigue. Itchy. 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 Itchy is an adjective. Something that is itchy is something that makes you feel you want to itch or you want to scratch that spot. Here's an example. My nose is itchy. My nose is itchy. My nose is itchy. Sore throat. Sore throat. Sore throat. 
A sore throat is a medical condition. This part of your body is in pain. We use sore throat a lot when we have a cold. Here's an example. I have a sore throat. I have a sore throat. I have a sore throat. Baseball. 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 Baseball is a very popular sport in the United States. In baseball, there are four bases in a diamond shape. Players hit a ball and run around to the different bases to score points. Here's an example. Baseball game. Baseball game. Baseball game. Ice hockey. Ice hockey. Ice hockey. Ice hockey is a popular winter sport. Ice hockey is a hockey game played on top of ice. So the players wear ice skates and they use sticks to hit an object called a puck into a goal. Here's an example play ice hockey. Play ice hockey. Play ice hockey. Skiing. 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 Skiing is a very popular winter sport. Skiing refers to going down a mountain in the snow with two skis, that's the noun form, a ski. You wear two skis, one on each foot, and go down the mountain. This sport is called skiing. Here's an example My hobby is skiing. My hobby is skiing. My hobby is skiing. Paperclip. 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 A paperclip is a very common office product. We use a paperclip to put two or more pieces of paper together, but it's just temporary. We can use a paperclip, a small piece of metal bent into a curled shape, to connect a few documents just for a short time. Here's an example box of paperclips. Box of paperclips. Box of paper clips. CD. 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 A CD is something that we used to use a lot to listen to music. CD means compact disc. A CD had an album of music from an artist, and you can listen to this even today by using a CD player or putting the CD in your computer. Here's an example I ordered a new CD. I ordered a new CD. I ordered a new CD. Buy. 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 So the verb buy means to give someone money in exchange for something else, to receive something else in return. You can use your money to buy something as a physical object, to buy a service, and so on. Here's an example buy food. Buy food. Buy food. Madrid. 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 Madrid is a very big city in Spain. It's a very popular tourist location. Here's an example Madrid, Spain. Madrid, Spain. Madrid, Spain. Keyboard. 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 A keyboard is a musical instrument. It looks like a piano, but a keyboard is digital. You play it by pressing your fingers on the black and white keys. Here's an example 
Play the keyboard. Play the keyboard. Play the keyboard. Rash. 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 A rash is a medical condition. A rash is usually a part of the skin that turns red in color and often is very painful or maybe it feels itchy. Here's an example. Itchy rash. Itchy rash. Itchy rash. Nausea. 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 Nausea is a very interesting word with an interesting spelling. Nausea is the pronunciation. Nausea refers to a medical condition, a feeling in your body. When you feel nausea, you feel your stomach is not happy and like the inside of your stomach might come out of your body. Here's an example. Nausea and vomiting. Nausea and vomiting. Nausea and vomiting. Vacancy. 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 Okay, vacancy is a noun. This word vacancy means an open spot somewhere, some kind of available place. We see vacancy used a lot in hotels, which means there is an open room. Here's another example. This parking lot has no vacancy. This parking lot has no vacancy. This parking lot has no vacancy. Ping pong. Ping pong. Ping pong. Ping pong is a very popular game. It's played with a paddle and a small ball, and there's a table with a net across the top. You play the game by hitting the ball across the net at your opponent. Here's an example. Play ping pong. Play ping pong. Play ping pong. Running. 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 Running is a very popular sport. Running refers to simply going outside or in the gym and going for a jog or sometimes going quickly, which is referred to as sprinting. So running can be done almost anywhere. Here's an example sentence. The woman is running on the beach. The woman is running on the beach. The woman is running on the beach. DVD. 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 A DVD is a now kind of old way to watch a movie. A DVD is a movie on a CD disc, so you can play a DVD with a DVD movie player or by putting the DVD disc inside your computer. Here's an example sentence. I love to watch this DVD with my friends. I love to watch this DVD with my friends. I love to watch this DVD with my friends. Staple. 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 Staple is used as both a noun and a verb. As a verb, to staple means to use a stapler, an object, a machine you have in your office or your home, to connect two or more pieces of paper. The two pieces of paper are connected with the noun form of this word, a staple. A staple is a small piece of metal that goes through the papers and is connected on the other side. Here's an example that uses the noun form. Box of staples. Box of staples. Box of staples. 
stapler. 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 As I just described, a stapler is a machine you use to connect two or more pieces of paper. These are very, very common in offices and other schools and workplaces and situations in which people need to connect documents all the time. Here's an example. Return my stapler. Return my stapler. Return my stapler. Mary. 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 Okay, this verb means to join together for life, as in a partnership for life. So when two people decide they want to have a partnership for life, they decide to get married, and the verb form of this is marry. For example, I want to marry you. I want to marry you. I want to marry you. Saxophone. 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 A saxophone is a musical instrument. It's usually made of brass and is played with two hands. It has a part at the top that is a little straight, it goes in your mouth, a long body that ends in a bell shape, and it's often used in jazz music. Here's an example. Play the saxophone. Play the saxophone. Play the saxophone. Drums. 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 The drum, or drums in the plural form, is another musical instrument. We play the drums by using two sticks and hitting different things to create different sounds. All of these different things we hit used together are called drums. In an example, play the drums. Play the drums. Play the drums. Harmonica. 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 The harmonica is another musical instrument. This is a small musical instrument, about this big. We play it by holding it up to our mouth and blowing air through holes in the harmonica. You might hear the harmonica used in music from the US. It has the feeling of a night out camping. Here's an example. Play the harmonica. Play the harmonica. Play the harmonica. Room service. Room service. Room service. Room service is something you can receive in a hotel. If you want to order something to eat, something to drink, you can usually pick up the phone in your hotel room and request room service, which means you want someone to bring food or drinks to your room. Here's an example. Room service meal. Room service meal. Room service meal. Receipt. 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 Receipt has a very interesting spelling. There is a P in the spelling of this word, but we do not pronounce it. The pronunciation is receipt. A receipt is a small piece of paper, a physical receipt, or sometimes a digital receipt that gives you information about something you bought. So after you go to a store and you buy something, usually you receive a receipt a record of your purchase. Here's an example. Hotel receipt. Hotel receipt. Hotel receipt. Wi-Fi. 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 
Wi-Fi is a very common word these days. Wi-Fi means wireless internet connection. Many people have Wi-Fi in their homes, and there are lots of places out in cities and communities where you can access free Wi-Fi as well. Here's an example. Wi-Fi router. Wi-Fi router. Wi-Fi router. Garbage can. Garbage can. Garbage can. A garbage can is a place you put your trash or your garbage after you are finished using something, and it's the thing that you use to remove the garbage from your home, usually once or twice a week. Many people have a garbage can in the kitchen or in the bathroom. Here's an example sentence. Put the garbage can out by the curb every Tuesday to be emptied. Put the garbage can out by the curb every Tuesday to be emptied. Put the garbage can out by the curb every Tuesday to be emptied. Envelope. 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 An envelope is something we use to send a letter or to mail a letter or other important document. When we finish writing our document or writing our letter, we put it inside an envelope, a case for the letter, and send it. Here's an example phrase. Red envelope. Red envelope. Red envelope. Paper. 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 Paper is, of course, something we use for many different things. We usually use paper in school and at work for writing notes, for doing our homework, for sharing little pieces of information on small size paper, and so on. So paper is a very, very common material. Here's an example phrase. Piece of paper. Piece of paper. Piece of paper. Engage. 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 Engage is part of the expression to get engaged. To get engaged refers to the step before getting married to someone. So to get engaged with someone means to ask someone to marry you and for the other person to say yes. So we don't say I engaged someone, but we say I got engaged or they are engaged. Here's another example situation. Are you engaged? Congratulations. Are you engaged? Congratulations. Are you engaged? Congratulations. Infection. 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 An infection is not a good thing to have. So an infection refers to a wound on the body usually that has bacteria or something else bad in it that creates sometimes a very painful experience or it can create something that's very, very unpleasant. So when we have an infection, we need to get medicine to take care of the infection. For example, skin infection. Skin infection. Skin in Infection. Next is flu. 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 The flu refers to a very, very common type of sickness. Flu is short for influenza, a type of sickness. So the flu refers to just a general feeling of not being in very good health for most of us. We can have a fever, maybe we have a runny nose, maybe our stomach hurts, or we have some combination of these feelings. So when we say we have the flu, it generally means we have this very common type of illness that affects the body, usually for a short period of time. This happens a lot in winter. Here's an example expression. Flu season. Flu season. Flu season. Okay, the next word is trumpet. 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 
A trumpet is a musical instrument. This is a brass instrument that can be held in the hands. It has three keys at the top, and the person playing the instrument can control the pitch of the sound with their lip motions and with the speed of the breath that they're using through the instrument, and so on. So, for example, brass trumpet. Brass trumpet. Brass trumpet. Next is departure gate. Departure gate. Departure gate. The departure gate is a very important thing to know when you are traveling by air. The departure gate is the place in the airport that your flight is going to leave from. So it usually is on your boarding pass, the departure gate number, and you need to go to that specific gate, that specific location, in order to get on your flight. So here's an example: departure gate 43. Departure gate 43. Departure gate 43. Next is sociology. 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 Sociology is the study of humans and the study of human behavior. So when we study sociology, we look at the different ways that humans have relationships, the ways that humans have interacted over time, the ways that we maybe communicate through our body language or through our words. There are many, many different factors to sociology, but they all relate to societies and people. Here's an example expression: study of sociology. Study of sociology. Study of sociology. Okay, the next word is flight attendant. Flight attendant. Flight attendant. A flight attendant is a person who works on an airline, and they're the people that help you when you need something to eat or something to drink, or when you have a question while you're on the flight. If you need a blanket or if you need some help with maybe headphones, for example, you talk to a flight attendant. Flight attendant can refer to either a man or a woman. For example, female flight attendant. Female flight attendant. Female flight attendant. The next word is seat. 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 So a seat is a place to sit. So you might have many seats in your house. Any place that you can sit down can be called a seat. Generally, however, when we make a reservation for something, for example, at a concert or maybe on an airplane, we have one specific seat that is for us only. So, for example, airplane seat. Airplane seat. Airplane seat. Okay, the next word is medicine. 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 So the word medicine has a couple of different uses. It can refer to the study of human health and how to recover from injuries and illness. And the word medicine can also be used to talk about something that we take or that we put on our bodies to help us to recover from an injury. So doctors and nurses study medicine in order to give their patients medicine to recover from things. Here's an example: field of medicine. Field of medicine. Field of medicine. Okay, the next one is economy class. Economy class. Economy class. Economy class usually refers to a specific type of seat or a specific category of seat on an airplane. You may also find economy class on something like a train, perhaps. So, economy class usually refers to the most affordable seats on an airplane or on a train. There are other types of classes that you can buy, but economy is usually the cheapest and tends to be maybe the least comfortable as well. Here's an example expression. Economy class seats. Economy class seats. Economy class seats. Okay. Next is flight. 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 All right. 
Flight refers to a couple different things in English, but in many cases, it refers to traveling through the air. So when you make a reservation for airline travel, we usually say I reserved a flight, which means you reserved a seat on a plane that's going through the air. So for example, boarding pass for the flight. Boarding pass for the flight. Boarding pass for the flight. Luggage. 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 Luggage refers to all of the things that you take with you on your trip. When you bring a suitcase, a backpack, a handbag, another type of bag, we call all of that luggage. So some people like to travel with a lot of luggage and some people like to travel very light, which means they don't bring a lot of luggage. Here's an example phrase. Travel with luggage. Travel with luggage. Travel with luggage. Okay, next is bandage. 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 A bandage is a piece of cloth or maybe a piece of glue and some other kind of tape maybe material, that we put over a wound. We put over an injury to help it heal. So for very, very small injuries, maybe you know things like band-aids, which we have that are like little sticky kinds of pieces of cloth that we can put on our skin to help wounds heal. But if you have a very big injury, you may need a much larger bandage. Like you need to wrap some cloth around a maybe very damaged part of your body, or you might even break a bone and need to wrap a very, very big bandage called a cast around your arm or your leg. No matter what, these are all referred to as bandages, things that we use to help our body heal. Here's an example. Wrap with bandage. Wrap with bandage. Wrap with bandage. Okay, the next word is patient. 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 So a patient is a person who receives care from a doctor. So although we have this word patient, which means someone who is very calm and can wait for things for a long time, the word patient in medical situations refers to the person who goes to the hospital, who goes to the clinic, who meets with the doctor in order to receive care. So whenever someone in like a doctor or a nurse position talks about a patient or the patient, they are referring to the sick person or the person who needs care. So an example of this is sick patient. Sick patient. Sick patient. Okay, the next word is department. 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 A department means part of an organization or part of a company or even part of a store. So when we talk about a department, it's usually because we want to talk about something specific that we can buy in that section or something specific that people in that section do. So in a company or in an organization, different departments have different specialties. For example, accounting or marketing or sales. And in say a department store, you might find different departments based on the type of item. For example, the shoe department or the clothing department or the lifestyle or home care departments and so on. Here's an example. What department do you belong to? What department do you belong to? What department do you belong to? Okay, next is accountant. 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 An accountant is someone who takes care of money, budgets, taxes, and so on. So we can have an accountant at our company, and we can also have a personal accountant. These are people who help us to keep track of our finances, our money, and to help us to file information with our governments to make sure we pay the correct amount of taxes. So an accountant is a type of job. Here's an example. Licensed accountant. Licensed accountant. Licensed accountant. Okay, next is lawyer. 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 
A lawyer is a job. A lawyer is someone who is specialized in the rules and regulations of a country, or maybe even the rules of a specific region, like a city or a state. So, a lawyer is someone who interprets or who understands laws. So, in this word "lawyer," we see L A W, which is law. So, law refers to the rules of a specific place. A lawyer is someone who understands and interprets those rules. So, here's an example expression: company lawyer. Company lawyer. Company lawyer. The next word is wage. 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 So, a wage is the amount of money that you are paid to do a job. So, depending on the job, your wage is different, and depending on your experience, your wage may be different. So, a wage is commonly expressed as a certain amount per hour. For example, five dollars per hour is a wage, or maybe ten dollars an hour is a wage. So, there are many different wages according to different jobs, experience levels, and so on. Here's an example: minimum wage, minimum wage, minimum wage. Next is piano, piano, piano. A piano is a musical instrument. This is a noun. A piano is a very large, usually instrument that has 88 black and white keys, and we play by moving our hands in this motion. So a piano can be very, very big, like the ones you see in concert halls, and we can also have digital or electric pianos, which many people have in their homes. Here's an example expression: grand piano, grand piano, grand piano. Okay. The next word is flight number. Flight number. Flight number. A flight number is the number of a specific plane that someone takes to go to another location. So when you make a reservation for a flight, you will receive the flight number. So you can pass that information to someone who's going to pick you up at the airport, or to share that information with someone you're going to meet at the airport. Whatever the flight number has the details like the departure time, the arrival time, the arrival gate, and so on. So a flight number is a very important part. Of your travel itinerary. Here's an example: flight number three four five. Flight number three four five. Flight number three four five. Next is agriculture. 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 Agriculture is a type of science. So agriculture refers to. Growing food, growing plants, and even taking care of cattle. So cattle refers to animals that we grow or that we raise for usually、uh, meat purposes or for dairy purposes, and so on. So agriculture refers to doing things like farming in order to create food products and perhaps other lifestyle products. Here's an example: agriculture product. Agriculture product. Agriculture product. Accounting. 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 Accounting refers to keeping track of money. So, in companies and organizations, there is usually an accounting department. It's a department of the company that is responsible for keeping track of money-related things. So, where does the money go? Where are the receipts? What was the money used for? And so on. We also have personal accounting, where we track our own money. For example, accounting documents. Accounting documents. A count. Ding documents. Next is bonus. 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 A bonus means something extra. It means something that is not part of the original plan, and in many cases, it refers to extra money. So, if you receive a bonus from your job, for example, it means that you receive extra money at your job. You might also just get something called a bonus at something like an event, or at a restaurant, or maybe at some kind of concert that you go to, where you receive something 
extra as a kind of gift. But usually this refers to money from work. For example, annual bonus. Annual bonus. Annual bonus. Next is light. 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 So there are a couple of different uses of the word light, but for this video, I want to focus on the one that refers to weight. So this light is the opposite of heavy. So something that is heavy weighs a lot. It's difficult to pick up. Something that is light does not weigh a lot. It's very easy to pick up. For example, light feather, light feather, light feather. Next is trombone. Trombone, trombone. A trombone is a very common musical instrument. This is a brass instrument. It's very unique in that it's played by moving a slide up and down to change the pitch of the instrument. For example, brass trombone, brass trombone, brass trombone. Next is departure, departure. Departure. So departure refers to the time, usually, that you leave somewhere. We see this word a lot as part of a schedule. We can use departure with a time or a place to talk about the location or the time at which we leave someplace. So for example, departure date. Departure date. Departure date. Next is arrival. 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 Arrival refers to the opposite of departure. Departure means to leave someplace. Arrival means to come to someplace as your destination. So arrival can be used to talk about a schedule and it can also be used to talk about a location. For example, arrival gate. Arrival gate. Arrival gate. Next is violin. 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 A violin is a very common and very popular musical instrument. This is a string instrument that is small enough to be held in the hands next to the face. It's played by drawing a bow across the strings of the instrument. For example, play the violin. Play the violin. Play the violin. Earth science. Earth science. Earth science. Earth science is probably easy to guess. It is science that is related to the Earth. So the study of natural parts of our planet. So that can mean rocks and trees and nature and how the Earth moves and so on. All of these things are related to Earth science. Here's an example phrase. Earth science research. Earth science research. Earth science research. Next is science. 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 Science is a very, very big category of study. Science is related to the study of many different things in the world that are naturally occurring. So this could be people, it could be animals, it could be the planet and environment, it could be volcanoes, it could be space, it could be chemical reactions. These are all types of science. Here's an example phrase. Study of science. Study of science. Study of science. Next is prescription. 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 A prescription is something a doctor gives to you that you then take to a pharmacy to receive medicine. So in the past, we would receive a written prescription. The doctor would write the name of the medicine on a piece of paper and give it to us. Now some people might have digital prescriptions as well. You can take these to the pharmacy and receive the medication that you need. Here's an example phrase. Fill a prescription. Fill a prescription. Fill a prescription. Allergy. Allergy. 
This word is a noun, and allergy is a negative reaction that you have to something else. So for example, people might have an allergy to a certain food, to a certain kind of plant, maybe to an animal. So this causes a reaction in the body. For example, maybe your eyes get really, really watery or you start to sneeze a lot. These are examples of allergies. For example, allergy to pollen, allergy to pollen. Allergy to pollen. Next is boarding pass. Boarding pass. Boarding pass. Okay, a boarding pass is a piece of paper or a digital pass that you can show to airline staff when you need to get on a plane. So a boarding pass includes your flight number, your seat number, probably the gate that your flight will take off from. So a boarding pass is necessary to get on a plane. For example, boarding pass for the flight. Boarding pass for the flight. Boarding pass for the flight. Next is education. 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 Okay, education is a noun. Education refers to the things that we learn, usually in school or as well in our lifetime. So when we talk about going to school, we talk about receiving education. So that's all of the different kinds of knowledge and the different experiences that we have as kids becoming adults. And then after that, we have other forms of education, other forms of knowledge that we get from books, from our jobs, from our hobbies, and so on. So there are many different ways to receive education or to get education. Here's an example phrase. Education and training. Education and training. Education and training. Next is English. 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 Okay, so English is the language that you are learning right now with this video. So English is a very interesting language. It pulls inspiration from many other languages and countries and cultures around the world. With English, we have kind of interesting spellings to think about, interesting ways to pronounce words, and there are many different dialects to consider in English as well. Here's an example sentence. Mr. Suzuki teaches English. Mr. Suzuki teaches English. Mr. Suzuki teaches English. Next is law. 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 So law can refer to two different things. Law can refer to a country or a city or a state's rules. Their formal rules are called laws. And when we go to school to study those things because we want to become lawyers, we also refer to the study of those things as law. For example, law school, law school, law school. Next is flute, flute, flute. So a flute is a musical instrument. A flute is played in this position. So we use our two hands next to our face to play the flute. It's a long kind of tube shaped instrument that makes a high pitched sound. This is very, very common in orchestras and in symphonies and in maybe high school bands as well. For example, silver flute, silver flute, silver flute. Okay, next is IT department. IT department. IT department. Okay, an IT department is a very, very common section in many companies and many organizations. The IT here stands for information technology. So usually the IT department is responsible for helping people with their computer problems, with other technology problems, media problems, and so on. For example, call the IT department. Call the IT department. Call the IT department. Next is business trip. Business trip. Business trip. 
a business trip is a trip that you take specifically for business. So that means it's different from a vacation. When you take a vacation, it's just for fun. When you have a business trip, you have to go somewhere for work. And maybe you have some fun while you're there also. But the main purpose of your travels is work or business. For example, go on a business trip. Go on a business trip. Go on a business trip. Next is marketing. 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 Marketing is another very common and very important section of many companies and organizations. Marketing refers to the process of creating things that will help sell products or sell goods and services to other people. So that can mean creating advertisements, it can mean writing things on a company website, and so on. For example, marketing department. Marketing department. Marketing department. Next is popular. 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 So, popular means something that many people like. So, when something is popular, that means that a lot of people think that it's really, really good. Be careful not to confuse popular and famous. When something is famous, it means many people know about it, or maybe many people know about a person. When something is popular, it means lots of people know about it and lots of people like it. So we can talk about people in this way, we can talk about places like restaurants, and we can also talk about things with the word popular. For example, popular man. Popular man. Popular man. Insignificant. 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 So the word insignificant means something that is not important. It's not special. If we break this word down, we have the prefix in, which means not or no, and the word significant, which means something that is important or something that we need to care about or pay attention to a lot. So together, this means not significant or not important or not something that we need to care or think about a lot. Insignificant. Insignificant amount. Insignificant amount. Insignificant amount. Famous. 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 So, something that is Famous is something or someone that is very, very well known. So this is usually someone like a celebrity, like an actor or an actress. Maybe they're a musician, they're part of a band, perhaps they're an artist, they create paintings, or maybe they write something that's very, very well known. So someone who is famous is known by many different people, and something that is famous is also known by many different people. For example, famous actor. Famous actor. Famous actor. Sneeze. 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 So, sneeze is a verb and a noun. To sneeze, the verb, means that feeling that you have in your nose when your body needs to move air out of it really quickly. We have that achoo, right? That's called the noun form sneeze. And as a verb, we say to sneeze. So that means to do that action. For example, the woman is sneezing. The woman is sneezing. The woman is sneezing. Casual. 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 So casual is the opposite of formal. Casual means something that is kind of relaxed, something that is laid back, something that's not super polite. So when we have everyday conversations with our friends, we usually use casual language or we dress in casual clothes or we have kind of a casual feeling. For example, casual clothing. Casual clothing. Casual clothing. Guitar. 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 This word has kind of an interesting spelling. It starts with G U I, but we pronounce this as git. So, a guitar is a musical instrument. We play it like this usually, and this is something that is played all over the world. There are lots and lots of talented people who play guitar, and they are called guitarists. For example, some of them play a six string guitar. Six string guitar. Six string guitar. Next is breathe. 
breathe. Breathe. Okay, this word is a verb. It means to take air into your body and to put air out of your body. This process of getting air into your body and moving it out is called breathing. Make sure you're cautious of the spelling of this. To breathe, this word has an E at the end, yeah? We also have a noun that looks very similar and is related to this process. That's called breath, but there's no E at the end. So be careful when you use this as a verb. Make sure you don't forget that E. For example, breathe deeply, breathe deeply, breathe deeply, spit, spit, spit. So this is kind of a gross vocabulary word, but it's important to know. This is a noun and a verb. So as a verb, to spit means to force whatever is in your mouth out of your mouth. So if you're eating something, for example, and you spit it out, that means you force it out of your mouth. If you have nothing in your mouth, just the water, the liquid in your mouth, and you put that out of your mouth, that's called spitting. So to spit means to force something out of your mouth. As a noun, spit means just the liquid inside your mouth. So an example, no spitting, no spitting, no spitting. Dentist, dentist, dentist. So the dentist is the tooth doctor. So when you need to have your teeth cleaned, when you need to talk to a doctor about something happening in your mouth, with your teeth, with your gums, these kinds of things, you visit a dentist. It's important to see a dentist regularly. So for example, see a dentist, see a dentist, see a dentist. Cavity, cavity, cavity. So a cavity usually refers to a hole in your tooth. So this is a very common type of tooth damage. When you have a cavity, you need to go and see a dentist to get it repaired. For example, deep cavity, deep cavity, deep cavity, asthma, asthma, asthma. So this word has very interesting spelling. There's a TH in the middle, but we don't say asthma, we say asthma. So kind of ignore that, but try to remember it when you're spelling this word. So asthma is a very, very common type of illness that affects the lungs. So someone who has asthma may have trouble breathing normally, or maybe they are irritated, their lungs get irritated by some kind of allergic reaction, or maybe they have to take some kind of medication to help them to breathe regularly. So different people have different kinds of asthma, but this is a very common illness that affects the lungs. So here's an example expression. Asthma inhaler. Asthma inhaler. Asthma inhaler. Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free English ebook before it's gone.